Howdy folks, Spencer here, and today I want to go through and take a look at the latest batch of news for STO on both PC and console. There's quite a few things for me to go through today, so as always, chapters are going to be listed down below if you want to skip ahead to any specific topics. Now, over on the console side, console has quite a few news blogs that have went up over the past week, and basically... What's happening is that later today, after this video goes out on June 13th, console is going to be getting the unraveled season. And what that means is that those of you on console are going to get the first episode in the new story arc. You're going to get the Leviathan TFO. You're going to get two new patrols, which are both pretty good. And you're going to be getting an update to the Infinity Lockbox, which has the Gorn Hunter Pilot Raider in it, along with some items from Strange New Worlds. Now, most of these items from Strange New Worlds are actually just directly in the Infinity Lockbox. I do have a video uh, from when this stuff dropped on PC that you can check out that goes over these items. Just keep in mind that some of the items that I said were going to the Lobby Store ended up going to the Lockbox. The only things that actually went to the Lobby store were the, the Magellan staff and one of the, the uniforms. So the rest of it went directly into the Infinity Lockbox and is actually quite accessible. Now, Console also has the Looming Threats event starting up. This Looming Threats event is not part of the year-long event campaign. This is a seasonal event for the Unraveled Season. And basically, you just have to play for 20 days, any of the, the content listed here. And if you get your two points a day for 20 days, you will get this Crystal Harmonic Space Set. This space set has a shield, a warp core, singularity core, and a Tetrion Omni Beam that can be used alongside other set Omni Beams on your ship. So this, this Omni Beam is quite nice in that it can bypass that restriction you typically see on most Omni Beams. You can still only equip two Omni Beams, but this gives you an option and a way to run two set Omni Beams at the same time if that's what you're wanting. Now the set itself isn't terrible. I can actually show you it here. Um, the, the Warp Core, the, the Warp Core is what I've gotten the most use out of personally. The, the warp core is nice even on non tetrion builds but the entire set is really synchronized around boosting tetrion up if that's your thing but the warp core will work on anything and what the warp core does is it will spawn in the Tholian warp crystals when you defeat a foe and those warp crystals will deal damage to foes that collide with it and if you or an ally collide with it it will give you or that ally secondary shielding for 20 seconds. So the performance from this DPS wise has been mixed. I've, I've had good runs with it and I've had runs where it performed quite bad and I would have been better off using like a, the disco core or like a, the fleet spire core. So it is nice when it works. And if you're looking to run a Tetrion build, this set is quite nice. Um, just know that when this set goes live on console, the crit chance and severity values may be reversed. Um, they only just fixed that and swapped those around to the correct values last week on PC. And the set's been out for, for like a month now. So just keep in mind that if you see it saying that it gives you 9% crit chance for Tetrion weapons on console tomorrow, that that will eventually be 3% crit chance and 9% severity. They will flip that around. Overall, the, the Tholian set from the looming threats there is is solid. And the console for the set you get from the mission. If you're a Tetrion fan, or again, you want to have an Omni that you can use, a set Omni that you can use alongside other set Omnis, then definitely check that set out. It's fairly easy to get. My recommendation to people was Jupiter Gauntlet on normal. If you have a good AOE DPS build, you can get through that patrol in like 30 seconds. But if you're having issue with that patrol, then 
there are other options like the new Leviathan TFO, which is basically just three lanes going down uh, the feature thing. Um, Azure Nebula, you know, that works. Days of Doom, I would avoid, and Vaults and Snares, that takes a while. So Leviathan, Azure, or Jupiter Gauntlet is what I would recommend. Or you could do the new episode to get your daily progression. And another thing I want to mention for the console, I already mentioned the, the Gorn Hunter. Um, now, I am going to be getting a review out for this ship here sooner rather than later, because... In my opinion, this has been one of the better Infinity lockbox drops in recent times. I have gotten a ton of use out of it. The, the ship itself sucks to fly, to be clear. The, the Gorn Hunter has this spinning effect where it just spins when you fly, and it, it's really aggravating. Um, but the the nice thing about the, the Gorn Hunter here is that all of its secondary items, the, the Starship trait, the experimental weapon, the console... And even the Gorn Plasma Quad Cannons that it comes with are all massive boost for Plasma. So if you're someone running a Plasma build, I would say that the Gorn Hunter is something that you should strongly consider. And I'll be talking about it more in a future video, but I'll just say that for, for me, um, as someone that likes to play a lot of Elite content, this has made me shift most of my energy weapon builds for elite content over to plasma rather than phaser or disruptor. And I think that phaser or disruptor are still better in situations where things die fast, but the accessories from the scorn hunter give a massive boost to plasma, especially in situations where targets live a long time. So stay tuned for that review because I, like I said, I have absolutely been enjoying the the secondary items off the ship not the ship necessarily itself but it, it has four accessories on it that are all actually pretty solid okay and i think that might be it for for console news here there there is patch notes here which i guess i can look at um looks like they're just mentioning all the events here they did it looks like for those of you on console um, they are going to push the update today that will make it so that you can get your mail from anywhere so you don't have to go to a mail console anymore. That's good. I still wish that they would add a take all button for all of your exchange purchases or sales. And it looks like you guys are going to get access to the Omega Reputation armor set visuals that, well, those of you on console just simply never had access to. So that's, I believe that's it for, for console. Let's head over to the PC side of things. And for those of us on PC, we had the flagship celebration event start up last Thursday. This is the third event in the year long event campaign. And for those of you that have been playing every day and were able to take advantage of the extra days that the Voth event was up, you will probably be able to complete your event campaign by the end of this event. I think I should be just about able to. I might have to buy the, the last day or two of the event out, but I'll be getting my event campaign done here, and I, I think plenty of you will be too. Um, so yes, I will also be getting an event campaign uh, recommendation video out here soon. I just have had a lot of other things, you know, suddenly pop up that I need to get done. Now, this flagship celebration event, I talked about a week or so back, talked about the the queues for it and all that but i do want to give an update on the the rewards here um the fleet flagship distress frequency thing here apparently when you use this it only summons the flagship for 45 seconds and it does spawn in alongside your existing fleet support ships so it would be nice if that kept your if it kept the flagship out for as long as it keeps the rest of the ships out um so a little bit underwhelming that that is only giving you an extra ship for 45 seconds. Now, for the Beverly Crusher Bridge Officer, this is very much a disappointment. Um, the only unique trait she has here is that, you know, a lot's happened in the last 20 or 30 years or whatever. And the issue is with this trait is that it has really long lockouts. So 
on activation of a beam or torpedo firing mode, you will get five seconds of cooldown reduction of 1% cooldown reduction per second. But that that's up for five seconds every 30 seconds at most. So that cooldown reduction really isn't that valuable. The other part of this is that on activation of a hull or shield repair bridge officer ability, you get a torpedo high yield one. The issue is this is once every 45 seconds. So it's a neat concept, but the execution with that, that type of cooldown just really hurts it. And I just do not see people dropping a superior Romulan operative or a watcher bridge officer for this thing. I, I just don't think it's good enough. So I would still do the event, you know, just, just to have the bridge officer and that flagship to stress frequency device, you know, just to have that unlocked and also to get your event campaign progress. So, um, bit underwhelming but you know not not every event reward is going to be good um as i mentioned last week the enterprise f remaster is available for you to get if you have an odyssey class ship you can go right down to the tailor and unlock that skin just apply the odyssey template and it will give you that nice visual update the connie 3 came out and uh not a big fan of it, you know, as you guys could probably tell in that, that video I did last week. Um, but one of the big things that happened alongside the release of the Constitution 3 here is that they have permanently lowered the price on R&D and duty officer packs in the C store. So they have permanently lowered the cost by 20%. And on top of that, there is also a 20% sale that is running for the next couple of days. Let me see here. Yeah, it's so I, it, I think that sale still might be running. Let me look in the store. Yeah, you've got another two and a half days to take advantage of that sale. So right now you can get a four pack of promo packs for 640 Zen. Um, so in the past, that would have been 800 Zen. So it, it is a nice discount, but these things are still expensive. Um, so with the, the cost reduction, I did go on Tribble a little bit ago, and I'm going to be doing a video about this, but I'll, I'll spoil it now. I opened 16,000 R&D promo packs, and that was a pain. It, it took me like two hours to do, and the the opening's probably going to be like a members-only video, but the, the, the breakdown of it will be a video out later this week, and the drop rate hasn't changed, and even with the... The uh, cost reduction to the packs, the the average cost to get a promo ship is still like 150 bucks. So these things are still expensive. I wish the the you know the pity system with the the gambling mechanics in this game would would change and be something a bit better, but it is what it is. Now, alongside the promo update, they also introduced that advanced R and D stuff which I am going to be covering much more over the next uh, couple of days and hopefully I'll have a guide out for how to do all the advanced R&D crafting later today. But these R&D Infinity promo packs in the C store are going to drop quite a bit of the R&D materials for these advanced consoles. And there were a lot of people worried about, you know, these consoles being locked behind like an elite uh, wall, basically, because of the materials dropping from elite. But there's been so many of these materials dropping from these Infinity promo R&D packs that the market is so heavily saturated. Like if, if you go and look up these advanced science consoles, you know, these these things are already down to, to like two to three mil. It's ridiculous. For the engineering ones, they are still a bit more expensive, but they have come down quite a bit and they are much more accessible than I think a lot of people thought they would be. And that is largely due to them being, or the, the materials dropping from these R&D packs. So definitely, you know, if you're wanting to get R&D or if you're wanting to get promo packs, you know, take advantage of the sale. And if you're wanting to get a stockpile of those materials, go for the R&D ones and open them up or sell them on the exchange and just buy the materials directly. You'll be able to, to get quite a bit out of that. Um, again, I'll talk about the R the advanced R&D stuff more 
over the next couple of days. They have a 25% flagship sale running currently in the C store up until June 15th. So the cross faction flagship mega bundle is going to be on sale. So all of the, the T6 flagships, that's the Odysseys, the Scimitars, and the Bordeskew. Um, the T5 bundles are also on sale. Um, but I'm surprised they don't have the, the Romulan Warbird bundle here. There is a legendary version of the Scimitar in the Sea Store as part of the, the legendary Romulan Warbird bundle. So that would have been a nice one to have been included here. But 25% off isn't the, the biggest sale. These bundles all go on a 35% sale every now and then. So in any case, I just wouldn't take advantage of this sale. It's, it's not good enough. Now, there is another set of sales here. This still has about two and a half days left to it. Um, so there's 20% lobby sale, and then there is a start your adventure sale, which is 25% off everything in the services tab, uniforms tab, personnel tab, and the starter packs tab. So definitely take advantage of those, especially if you need like DOF slots, good time to be taking advantage of those. And for those of us on PC, we did also have the temporal recruit event start up. Now I talked about doing a, like a temporal recruit rewards breakdown. And then I had someone point out to me, you know, Spencer, you did that video last year. And I appreciate that person reminding me because I was about to start working on another video, but the, the rewards haven't changed since last year. So. I'll have a link to that video in the description down below if you want to get a full breakdown on the the rewards from the temporal recruit. Um, but suffice to say, if you don't already have a temporal recruit, you need to make one. The, the rewards are extremely impactful, especially the, the reputation one, which will make it so that your rep gear moving forward when you complete a rep project is going to be Mark 13 Ultra Rare right off the bat for the same cost verse mark 12 very rare if you don't have that unlock so definitely create a temporal recruit if you do not already have one and we had a couple patches last week the introduction of the event campaign part three the advanced r d update um and again they changed that tholian crystal harmonic set like i talked about when i was talking about the the console news there um the the Crit chance and severity numbers were flipped around when this launch when the the Tholian Crystal Harmonic set launched, the crit chance was 9% and the severity 3%. A lot of us called out that, that was probably a bug, and indeed it was, and it has now been fixed. Um, and they did fix an issue like the following day, uh, with the the Kani 3 being a small being smaller than intended. They also fixed complex plasma fires, and I believe they also fixed the the Hydra uh, trait for those of you that were wanting to use that with your your pet builds. So I think that's pretty much it for for the news here. There's there's definitely been a lot this past week. I apologize for you know being a bit behind. You know, uh, for those of you that caught my stream on Saturday, you, you probably know that I've just been busy the the past week. Um, had some legal stuff wrap up. We got a new car. It's just, just been pretty hectic, pretty busy IRL. So yeah, just didn't have time to sit down last Thursday or Friday and get this uh, news video done. So thankfully a lot of these sales are running longer than they normally do. And if you're wanting to take advantage of them, you still have a couple of days to do so, especially the, the lobby sale and that start your adventure sale, both good sales to take advantage of. That's going to be it for this video today. Again, thank you to all channel members and viewers for the continued support. I am going to have an advanced R&D crafting guide out, like I said, sometime later today on Tuesday, June 13th. I just finished a lot of the, the work for it. I opened 16K uh, promo packs over on Tribble. And again, that, that was a tedious process, but I've got a good breakdown on how those components drop from those R&D packs and also have an idea of how they drop from the, the elite TFOs now. So that guide should be interesting for, for some of you later today. Thank you for watching and I will see you guys around.